Hi class and welcome to unit four, Avenues to Learning. This is one of my favorite units, uh, if not my, if not the favorite uh, in this class, because in this unit, we talk about some aspects of learning that are more abstract and personal. Specifically, we want to be able to do the following after reading through this unit. Recognize personal learning preferences and demonstrate specific study and note taking methods that utilize those preferences and work effectively as a member of at least three different groups of diverse individuals to achieve assigned goals. But before we get into unit four uh, too far, let's do a little bit of review. Let's do a little trivia to see what we remember and hopefully learned from uh, unit three. So a few trivia questions. First one, what are the four C's mentioned in reference to building resilience as a student? So courage, comfort, confidence, control, courage, confidence, connections, control, creativity, control, compassion, confidence, confidence, control, connections, and critical thinking. Say that seven times fast, that would be super impressive. So if you need to pause the video to think about it, that's fine. And here's the big reveal. Hopefully you were thinking the following after reading the unit. Courage, confidence, connections, control. Now, if you combine any four, you know, any combination of these would be a good combination. These are good attributes, right? Or good things to have uh, for building resilience. Okay, so next question, fill in the blank. People who are motivated from within or have an innate desire, not based on grades, money, or others' opinions, are motivated how? So hopefully you were thinking the following intrinsically. And you know, if if you're thinking, if you see grades, money, others' opinions, um, that's extrinsically, but this question or this statement is saying not based on those things. However, in the feedback that I gave, uh, most of you all, uh, probably all of you all, hopefully you noticed uh, that I was saying they kind of cross over. They mean extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. It's really hard to separate them, right? So uh, it's not really a concrete, it's very abstract, as I was mentioning, uh, unit four, as well as a lot of the units, and especially unit two, uh, very abstract. So it's really hard to separate them if you are doing something for money, but you know, maybe that thing that you're doing is really important just to you. It's not necessarily for money. Do you happen to gain money from it? And that's a good thing from it. Uh, so that's just one example. The tons of examples. It's hard to find examples where where the motivation is act actually solely extrinsic or solely intrinsic. Uh, so I think more than not, they kind of cross over. Okay, so next the question in a road trip nation road hazards what is the name of the college visited by melanie becca and armand uh, in fort gates north dakota sorry about that typo there so what's the name of that college is it fort gates community college north dakota state university fort gates university or sitting bull college so hopefully you watch the video because you might be surprised by that Answer is Sitting Bull College. Now, I like to stay away from stereotypes. It sounds like something that would be a stereotypical name or someone might use that as a, as a joke, but no, that's the actual name. The name itself is not originally a joke, but TV and media have made it, you know, used certain names or references to Native American people as a joke, which is kind of sad, really, but not kind of, it's very sad. But uh, yeah, it's Sitting Bull College. And if you watch the video, you're like, oh yeah, that's what it said. Okay, so last one. From the list of 19 elements that can help you develop grit, remember grit, unit three, which is most important to you and why? So which one is most important to you? Hopefully you have something in your mind from unit three or 19 elements. I'm gonna just share mine, right? Okay, so mine would be patience and Angela Duckworth said the following about patience in 2016. The journey towards any valuable goal takes more patience than we think it should. But the patience of mindfulness is a great strengthener of patience. <laughs> so 
you get patience upon patience, right? The more you practice patience, the more patience you get. That's basically what she's saying. And it's really cool to be patient about something and then and then experience the payoff for being patient. Um, so, you know, I think uh, in retrospect, once I get food at a restaurant, which I haven't been to in a long time, but once the food comes to me in a restaurant, it's like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Unless the service is just lousy. But busy restaurant, have to wait a little bit for the food, great payoff. And you appreciate it more, yeah, when you have to work for it and uh, be patient for it. That's for me. What is it for you? All right, so here we are, back to unit four. What is your learning preference? Uh, you probably have one preference that supersedes, uh, be it doing physical activities, watching a video or demonstration, or simply listening to a lecture. My preference is auditory learning. I'm a musician and linguist, so those areas of my brain uh, needed to learn auditorily are fairly sharp. I am not a good visual learner. When I see a graph or chart in an essay, I uh, tend to skip over it. That said, I am also a visual learner uh, by virtue of the fact that I have sight. Uh, I am a kinesthetic learner by virtue of the fact that I have a sense of touch. Uh, we all have these capabilities for learning. Having a preference simply means that you feel more capable for uh, or comfortable about learning in a certain way versus another. So please watch this video uh, in the Canvas announcement. Uh, in the video, Professor Gartner talks about using more than just one way to learn, uh, which most of us can likely relate to given the multiple streams of information we take in our daily lives. So hopefully you've been using this video as you're doing your engagement guide and you really do uh, need this part of the video to get through the middle part of your engagement guide. So here we go, fill in the blank. It won't show up on the screen. You'll just have to hear it. Okay, so here we go. Thinking more deliberately about some alternative approaches can make our time and effort more. And before I reveal the answer, this is from the textbook, the digital textbook that is in your Canvas page. You open your Canvas page and there it is. It's not a physical book, it's not a PDF, it's actually the links, all links that you see in Canvas for our class. Productive, that's the answer. Thinking more deliberately about some alternative approaches can make our time and effort more productive. So while human beings have many similarities, they also have many small but important differences as well, including which of the following of the senses they tend to rely on in processing information. Right. So these differences, they may include, oh, I prefer this sense, I prefer this sense, I prefer using this sense to learn, I prefer dancing around the room to learn, I prefer uh, having a hands-on approach, uh, getting my hands actually doing something while I'm Learning, don't just tell me about it, Professor. I actually have to stand up and do something or have some kind of something in my hands, some kind of microscope. Let me see the cells. Let's not just talk about them. Uh, that's hard for me to talk about. I, just show me the words. And uh, I don't know. I don't know why that is. Uh, that can be a detriment actually also, because when I get up to do stuff and uh, see grant uh, diagrams and all that stuff, yeah, I can get kind of confused. Anyway, so I definitely don't mean to boast like, oh, I can just listen to a lecture. No, that's, that's, that's nice, but you know, it kind of becomes a detriment when, when you don't get to just sit there. <laughs> okay, so all of these influences, uh, all of these influence uh, the way we learn. So let's call them, you guessed it, learning preferences. Yeah, we have learning preferences as we have talked about a couple of times already. But for most students, having a designated study area 
is a key factor in making the most of their voting preferences. It's good to not have surprises around. Know what's going to go on in your environment. Uh, maybe familiar with the sounds so you're not distracted. Familiar with the layout of the room. So it's not, oh, I wonder what that is on the wall. I wonder why they did it like that. And you can, you know, find yourself out in the middle of the ocean somewhere, not really focusing on what you need to focus on. Okay, so study area. It is important to create or select an environment that works best for you and to use that space regularly. That's what makes it uh, familiar and not surprising to you anymore. Neither tendency, whether or neither tendency, whether you uh, are an early bird or night owl is inherently good or bad, but taking your internal clock into consideration can help you create a schedule in which you learn best. Junior year, college, and OU, it's like 2002 or something like that, 2003 or something like that. Uh, I stopped, I lost the ability to study after 9 p.m. <laughs> so, 9 p.m., my eyes go, my eyelids go, they, they, they just fall. Uh, now, as a dad of little kids, I have miraculously overcome that tendency. Uh, but that's life stuff. That's not sitting down and, and reading or working on a paper. I uh, can't really do that after 9 p.m. And I'm kind of glad about it. It means my all-natter day is over. Now, that is unless it is something that I have mastered. If it's something I have to learn after 9 p.m. And, and I have a regular day, as in I'm doing stuff uh, from like 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. until the afternoon or evening, um, then when the evening comes, I'm done. <laughs> no learning for me. Uh, let's just do rote memory stuff, right? Okay. So what about you? Maybe you work best at night. I'm kind of jealous. Okay. So historically, most almost every significant human achievement has been the result of a coordinated human endeavor. Don't trip over the spelling of coordinated. It has two O's. A coordinated, coordinated human endeavor. Okay, so hopefully you use that for your engagement guide. Uh, this next part uh, of the unit is really my favorite. It's definitely my favorite part of this unit. Uh, from this point on, in the unit, we'll talk about valuing diversity so that we can ultimately collaborate collaborate with others toward a common goal. I consider the following information to be vital because uh, as technology advances our ability to, and expectation to communicate with people who might be different or might be from different cultures, uh, that will likely increase, that expectation will likely increase as well. Okay, so I'm going, I'm not going to say a whole lot about the video here. <laughs> so uh, you can access this video in the announcement in Canvas. I'll just pose this question to you. Uh, how do you think emotional intelligence plays into this conversation? So have that in your mind before you watch the video. How do you think emotional intelligence plays into this conversation uh, between two people who seemingly... Uh, have polar opposite viewpoints on the topic of uh, race and privilege. And I say seemingly, they definitely do. Uh, so let me put this disclaimer out here first before you watch it. Hopefully you haven't watched it yet. Um, so I do not support CRT, uh, critical race theory. Uh, I don't support the concept of race, period. <laughs> uh, instead, I promote learning skills for civil communication uh, between cultures that may initially and ultimately hold varying viewpoints about human experiences. So if I were to talk about race, uh, it might be a long video or it might be short. It might just be silent because there's no such thing as <laughs> different human races. What, what is that about? I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, so. so I think white people do need to talk about their whiteness more and here, we're here yeah. doing it. Uh, we're here to talk about white privilege. We want to bring it back. Okay, so you heard how that video started. Maybe I watch Appetite. Go watch it in the link in Canvas. 
Okay. Again, I don't support support CRT, so keep that in mind. Uh, okay, so have you ever done a privilege walk? Uh, I have, and I found it to be very enlightening. Now, because we have news at our, at our fingertips all day and all night, every day and every night, you'll probably guess the outcome of the privilege walk in this video. It is dripping with wokeness, which to me is, is I don't know, I'll leave my opinion out of that. Anyway, uh, so this video is an announcement in Canvas. And I'd like to say, though, uh, that it's simply an exercise to help people think about uh, people as human beings instead of the society given titles like black or white or LGBTQ plus or straight, et cetera. Uh, so pre-segregation of schools and the various civil rights movements that continue today, um, I imagine that people have higher chances of being paired with someone um, that was sim similar in culture or background. That is before a lot of schools were segregated in the sixties. Uh, and 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 later. Uh, however, it's it's possible that uh, you you very likely be paired or have to collaborate with someone who is very different from you, uh, different than you physically, religiously, politically, or in a myriad of other ways. Some people are born into families where they have to walk miles just to get water. Okay, so watch that. So uh, one way we can practice and increase our emotional intelligence is by learning to recognize and admit our biases. We would hold some biases unconsciously. Communicating with other people with different outlooks on life can help us to recognize and look beyond those biases. So watch these two videos, uh, which are linked in the announcement in Canvas, uh, to learn more about recognizing and overcoming unconscious biases. Disclaimer, this is really important. The second video uh, uses the N-word a few times. I mean, like two or three times. It is not celebrated by the speaker, however. Rather, it is used in reference to the speaker's ex personal experience and for educational purposes as she tells her story. Uh, please do not watch it if you're averse to the N-word. Uh, a word that I also find uh, in itself and when used outside of relating uh, personal accounts uh, to be deplorable. I think that word is deplorable. But that's my disclaimer. So you've been warned. Okay, so I hope you will be sure to read through the textbook, the digital textbook in Canvas. Uh, it's embedded in Canvas. That way you can successfully complete the assignments for Unit 4. Also, please remember that your uh, interest assessment assignment is due soon. Uh, so uh, lastly, you, if you haven't started on your success and in interview presentation, if you haven't contacted the person you want to interview, uh, now is a good time to start seeking out who you want to interview and ultimately present in Canvas. Thanks and take care.